to me about Tua for a second. Because how are we supposed to look at Tua, Marcus, based on what we saw last? I saw him throw for 295 yards. I saw the two interceptions. I saw yep. the pick six early. I saw them get in his face. I saw, a, I saw men coming at him and rattling him the first time, really, that I've seen him rattle. Tell me what you saw and how you think of Tua today compared to how you looked at him prior to last night's game. Steve, and hey, everybody thought Tua was invincible, right? It was two parts, right? Down here covering it in the southeast. One part was we had never seen anything like that at Alabama at the quarterback position, and we hadn't seen Alabama be a pass-first team creating with the RPO. So that's number one. Everybody got excited about that. Number two is Georgia gave the blueprint to how you defend against Tua. You don't give up the big play, and you make him go dink and dunk all the way down the field. The one time in the game where they gave up the play to Jerry Judy, the defensive coordinator, Brent Venable, said, I'll be damned if I give up another explosive play down the field. I know what kind of arm this dude got. I know what he's done all season long. So they kept everything in front of him. They called some plays defensive. The trap, the interception, the pick six, yes, it was a bad throw, granted, but that was called a trap by the cornerback. Two expected them to be one place, corner sat on the route, and he intercepted and took it back for a pick six. Here's the thing, man. Nick Saban will, and he might not admit this, and I have a lot of respect for what Mike Loxley did, the offensive coordinator for Alabama this year. Nick Saban may not admit this, but Nick Saban got a little bit out of who he is as a head coach. If you go back and look at the numbers in this, they were four for 12 on third down. They rushed the ball for 4.8 yards per carry and they still continue to throw the football. And the reason they got behind, and I don't care what anybody else says, is because they were trying to air the football out. So, with that being said, when you look at going into this next season, I guarantee you these conversations will revolve around not only coaching staff, but the philosophy in which we want to win football games. But when it comes to Tua, man, he's been tremendous. The yep. dude was sitting in New York with Kyler Murray, and nobody was talking about Trevor Lawrence being not better true. than Tua Tungvalu. That's not true. Nobody that's not was true. mentioning no, that. No, no, that's not true, Marcus. Max, I'll say this. Max, I'll at say, what point yeah. did you say Lawrence was better than Tua? Halfway through at the season. At what point before halfway, this game? Halfway through this season, I said on this show that he was going to be the presumptive number one pick eventually. Look, Trevor Lawrence. Yeah, Nobody, no, saying, no, I, I'm listen. not disputing that. But, 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 Marcus, but did you say you he was a better look, quarterback? Look, I don't know why Stephen A. shaking his head. But, I've but, been listen. shaking my head. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Yeah. And listen, if they find the tape, I'll apologize good. on national yes, television. Yes, you will. The fact that I, know. I know you will. I know okay, you will. I, you know yeah, I will. I, know. Yeah. I don't even recall you mentioning Trevor Lawrence. I know. I really That's don't. you take such beatings on the show, you're punch drunk. Now, listen. I got you. Marcus, this is what I'm saying. This is your non box This is what I'm saying. Go ahead. Tua Tungavailoa is certainly had that thing. The reason we were all crazy about him was not just that he's on Alabama and he's the quarterback. It wasn't that he had the biggest arm in the world, but he's really accurate, and he gave us that feeling, that sense of leadership, like he has that, that it factor. I'm not saying we knew that about Trevor Lawrence. I did not know that about Trevor Lawrence. All I knew was the physical tools of Trevor Lawrence. The eye-opener here, and you can't know that about a guy until you've seen him do it. Like, even if he would have had a great game and a losing effort, I'd be saying that about Trevor Lawrence. Now I'm asking you, did what you see from Trevor Lawrence last night, was that an issue of scheming and coaching and that sort of thing? Or do you believe he has it the way Deshaun Watson had it? Forget about the physical tools for a second. Max, I'm 100% with you. He has it, okay? But let's think about two things. Like, let's go football, because I know we like to fight on this show and we talk about it. One play. Savion Smith, I think, pops his Achilles, a guy's wide open. Ross breaks it down the sideline. Another play. Look, we're not even talking about Ross. The one-hand catch he made on the sideline, that was not a great throw. I'm not trying to take anything away from Trevor Lawrence. Ross his players made plays for him. The, the poise that Trevor Lawrence had, to me, was the most impressive thing. In the face of pressure, with guys bearing down, he stood in the pocket and delivered the football. And look, I give Dabo credit. Dabo knew this. I talked to Dabo a couple years ago, and he talked about Trevor Lawrence while he was trying to get the dude on campus. He said he was that type of player. I just had to see it 
against Alabama and Nick Saban and what I've seen him do to senior-laden quarterbacks happen in this game. I am as thoroughly impressed as anybody else wow. by what Trevor Lawrence did last night. But let's not get carried away and act like this has been a conversation oh. all year long about Trevor Lawrence being right, the right, best right, right. quarterback Trevor, in college football. Mar Marcus, Trevor, listen, I'm with you. Forget, forget Trevor Lawrence for a second, though. Let's go okay. to Ross. Right. Let's go to Ross because of the point that Max was trying to make. And I want to buffer his point in this regard. Is it possible that one of the biggest reasons why we could potentially be seeing a change of the guard, we don't want to overreact. Two for two. Both of them got two national championships in the last four years. We get it. But Clemson being right there, ultimately potentially grasping the mantle. Justin Rose is an Alabama guy. Went to Central Alabama High School yep. from Alabama. Yep. Was recruited by Alabama. Didn't make a decision until the last possible moment, which was the morning of. And he chose Clemson over Alabama. When we laud and praise Nick Saban so much, we don't just talk about his coaching. We talk about his recruiting. But when you see you got guys now going to Alabama, taking talent yep. from Alabama to bring elsewhere. Isn't that indicative of a change in the guard, potentially, when it materializes I, into a national see, championship? That, that, that is more of an indication than anything. And I get, I, I'll take you even a step further. Kirby Smart in Georgia as well. He's taking players out of the same areas that Nick Saban used to own. That is the lifeblood. When we talk college football, we talk recruiting as the lifeblood. The thing that stood out to me, Max and Stephen A., is that Clemson had better athletes on yeah. the field yesterday, Crazy. which we have not seen for a long time.